it's time for power, power, power panel. You know, every time we have uh, panelists, I think this is a powerful panel. So today, Richard Escal with us, Campaign for America's Future, of course. Uh, he's one of our regulators often uh, here. Zach Carter is a senior reporter for the Huffington Post. Great to have you. And uh, Mike Sachs is also a reporter for the Huffington Post. Uh, in fact, you also blog at the Huffington Post. I so do. it's kind of a little Huffington Post. Uh, and so do I, actually. The so. only other decent guitar player on the Huffington Post is Zach Carter. Oh, okay. So you guys are going to throw everybody else under the bus. Okay. Uh, so our first topic, guys. Uh, uh, why is President Obama rising in the polls and what can we learn from it? And let me show the audience what we're talking about here. The latest Gallup poll has him rising by about five points in favorable uh, and going down five in unfavorable. So he's now above water, as they say. You know, 47% approve, 45% disapprove. This is the first time that he's been more favorable since July. And by the way, they don't really say he's above water. I made that up. Okay, so Richard, let's start with why do you think he's been rising? Because he's been listening to progressives, for one thing. Because oh, he's right. finally done what people on, in the progressive movement have been telling him to do for about two years now, which is articulate the pain and frustration that this country's feeling economically. And because once he did that, and once he confronted the Republicans, which the left has also been telling him to do, they backed down, they looked ridiculous, he looked strong, and hopefully he'll come away from this and say, hmm, I should listen to those guys more often. Zach, thoughts? I think the real unfortunate reality of this is that he's, he's looked very good on a policy that doesn't actually mean very much. He's, he's done a, a great job making the case that, you know, if you vote against the payroll tax cut, you're voting against $1,000 in the pockets of, of middle class Americans, which is true. Uh, but a year ago, we were uh, talking about the payroll tax cut in the context of the Bush tax cuts. And there was this, this massive outcry from progressives because the president had offered up one year of this payroll tax cut plus one year of unemployment benefits in exchange for two years of the Bush tax cuts. And the thought at the time was, well, this isn't going to be anywhere nearly enough uh, economic boost to, to offset the, uh, the damage that we're going to do with the, the Bush tax cuts. So he's, he's managed to, to turn that around into a victory, a political victory a year later. Uh, but the, the sort of unfortunate truth of the matter is that we're still going to be in a, a world of economic trouble a year from now. And the president's going to be running for election at that you time. You know, Zach, it's interesting because I thought that was one of the reasons that uh, Republicans caved on the payroll tax cut. Because they're like, you know, and that's why Rove, et cetera, all of them pressured uh, the House Republicans to cave because they're like, this issue doesn't really matter that much. What are we losing all this political capital for on an issue that's not that big a deal, right? But so, Mike, that goes to the issue of, or I should actually bring up one last thing uh, before we run out of time on this, which is that, look, you see all of his political opponents battering him here, but maybe as you look at those guys, you think, by comparison, maybe this guy's not so bad. Well, well right. You have 11 months to go before the next general election, so the polls will go up and down along the way, and Obama can sink, Obama can rise. But when he's faced with the, op the opposing slate that's kicking the crap out of each other on a daily basis in Iowa and New Hampshire, well, <laughs> what, what can you do but say, hey, Obama looks pretty good compared to these people who've been described in you know, various press accounts as real you know, clowns? <laughs> yes, uh, I am um, among the people who describe them as clowns. Look, I think all these things are right, but I think actually Richard nailed it. Look, he stood up. We've been saying for three years, stand up, stand up. People like it when you're strong. And he was like, no, no, no. I think the better strategy is being weak and caving. Right. And as his numbers slid down, 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 and then once he stands up, oh, look at that. It turns out people do like that. Of course, of course people like it. All right, so let's move on to the next topic. Uh, do values matter anymore within the Republican field, right? Because you got Newt Gingrich with his three wives. There's a new controversy now. You know, he had said, hey, you know what? Um, my uh, wife, my first wife, is the one that asked for the divorce in reality. Ex CNN uh, uh, does some rare reporting, goes and finds out that, hey, no, that's not the case at all. They look at the legal filings, and here's what his first wife, uh, his lawyers wrote. Defendant, referring to the wife, shows she has adequate and ample grounds for divorce, but she does not desire one at this time. So she didn't ask for the divorce, he asked for the divorce. In fact, apparently he told a friend, uh, you know and I know that she's not young enough or pretty enough to be the wife of a president. He told that to Leonard Kip Carter, who's no longer his friend after hearing things like that from Newt Gingrich. Oh, what a bad guy this guy is. 
But hey, nationwide, still number one among the Republicans. So do values not matter anymore, Richard? I don't think they ever did. I mean, I think that there is a combination in the Republican Party of people who just want anybody who will say what they want to hear, and then fundamentalist Christians who, as long as you ask forgiveness, will accept anything you've ever done. And I think between the two of them, they pretty much dominate the Republican Party, and you could probably get an axe murderer in there, <laughs> as long as he was repentant enough afterward. Well. I mean, look, a lot of people died in the Iraq war. And then you had uh, Rick Perry saying, yeah, I execute people without a second thought. And they got wild applause. So there's a lot of death running around the Republican Party. But, M Mike, I mean, does Richard have a point there that, uh, that they never really cared? That if you're a Republican, you just go with, oh, my God, I repent to Jesus. And then everything is fine. They just don't like when Democrats cheat. Well, I think politics attracts both devoted public servants and incorrigible philanderers and narcissists. So what you have to expect with people who are running for president, that they'll have certain skeletons in their closet, and those skeletons will come out dancing. Uh, with the culture wars, you'd hope that, was, that ended in 2008 when Obama was elected, and the, the major issues that were dominating the Bush-Clinton-Bush era uh, really played, a, played much less of a factor. Uh, so you'd hope that that wouldn't be a factor now in this, in this race, but Gingrich, having been an active participant in those wars when he was speaker and leading into the Clinton, uh, Clinton impeachment trial, well, He's set up to be hung by his own, or hanged rather, by his own petard. And you know, who can who can blame Democrats perhaps for for using that against him if once he once he used it against them, you know, a decade or so ago. Zach, I read an interesting article today uh, about how Ann Romney's going around, of course, wife of Mitt Romney, saying, "Hey, we've been married 42 years, and we've got such a great marriage," and that, that might actually hurt them because people are hearing like, "Oh, aren't we awesome? We had a 42-year marriage. Our marriage rocks," and kind of rubbing it in people's face. Have the times changed so much? That Newt has the advantage since he, she, you know, had two different mistresses and had this rough marriages, et cetera, as opposed to Romney, who's plastic man. Well, I, I don't, I don't know. I, Romney appeared on uh, on Fox News Sunday uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh, really teared up talking about his his wife. It was one of the few. Uh, truly human moments, I think, of Romney's campaign, where he came across looking like a, a person with emotions rather than sort of a robot who, uh, you know, worships corporations. But I, I think you know, there, there is a certain part of the Republican, uh, in particular the pr Republican primary base, uh, that, that really is obsessed with the sex lives of people who they've never met. Uh, I, I've, I've never really understood that that sort of uh, interest. I can't find anything less interesting to think of than, than Newt Gingrich or Mitt Romney's sex lives. Uh, <laughs> but oftentimes this, oftentimes this is actually cover for a lot of other types of prejudices. It's, it's, you know, we talk about values and, and marriage as cover for homophobia or racism or you know, a, lot of, a lot of really unpleasant things that people don't want to come out in the open and, and talk about. You know, Romney, even in that moment, I thought was slightly disingenuous, though, because he said, you know, when my wife was sick, I, I you know, I said, it's okay, honey, I'll make the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I was like, who are you kidding? You could have a quarter of a billion dollars. Your chef will make the sandwich, okay? <laughs> so, I, you know, there was still, he couldn't help himself. And, and look, my conclusion on all this, I think all good points around, I, I don't think Republican voters care anymore I, at all, at all. I, I, if they say they care, I think they're being disingenuous. They're like, who hates Obama the most? That's my guy, okay? <laughs> I, you know, oh, yeah, he did this and he did that. If it's not a Democrat and it's not Wiener, you know, doing the tweets, I don't care. I hate those guys. The guys I care about, if they cheated, well, then that's, you know, well, they learned and they went to Jesus. In Newt's case, three different times because he's been at three different religions. So everything's forgiven. All right, Zach, Mike, Richard, you guys are the best. <laughs> now, when we come back, uh, millennials, um, are they lazier than older people? It's a big controversy, and we're going to weigh in. <laughs> All right, Young Turks. <laughs>